Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of rosacea. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what rosacea is. So rosacea is a chronic inflammatory and autoimmune condition involving recurrent episodes of skin lesions on the face. Now the pathophysiology of rosacea is not entirely understood. We know that it is an autoimmune condition, but even though we don't know the pathophysiology entirely, we do know that certain things can trigger the signs and symptoms, and these can include stress, sunlight exposure or ultraviolet light exposure, alcohol, and hot liquids like coffee or tea. So there are many other triggers to this as well. If you want more information, please check out my lessons on the triggers of rosacea. But the topic of this lesson is that rosacea can cause a variety of signs and symptoms, and we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of rosacea. As I mentioned before, the signs and symptoms of rosacea occur as recurrent episodes. So there are episodes of flare-ups of these skin lesions, and the episode will then go into remission, either spontaneously or due to treatment, and then there may be some trigger that can lead to another exacerbation or flare-up of symptoms. So we can see this recurrent cyclical pattern of episodes to remission back into another episode of skin lesions again. And there are particular areas of the face that are more commonly affected in rosacea. And these include this area in the forehead, this area over the nose and on the upper cheeks, and this area of the chin here. So these are going to be the most common areas of where we're going to see skin lesions. And they're going to be symmetric, meaning that if you see them on one cheek, you're going to see them on the other cheek as well. So the first skin finding I want to talk about is telangiectasia. So telangiectasia is a skin finding in rosacea that looks like this. Telangiectasia is simply the medical term we use for spider veins. So you can see these spider veins on the face. They're more likely to occur in older patients, so there's going to be a certain predilection for this particular skin finding in older patients. So this is going to be something that we can see in patients with rosacea. Another skin finding we can see is something called erythema. Erythema is going to be a skin redness. Now, the skin redness can be transient or non-transient, so it can be longer lasting. So you may have issues where the skin is very red for long periods of time, or it can simply come and go. And this is going to occur more likely in younger patients. So as opposed to those telangiectasias we talked about before, where they more likely occur in older patients. And another skin finding we can see is flushing. So flushing is going to be similar to erythema. This is going to be a transient reddening of the skin. It's not going to be as red as erythema, but there can be temporary episodes of mild reddening of the skin. And again, this also occurs in younger patients as well. We can also see issues with papules. So papules are going to be inflammatory skin lesions, and papules are going to be raised and reddened skin lesions less than 10 millimeters in diameter. And then we can also see pustules in rosacea patients as well. So pustules are going to be inflammatory skin lesions as well, and they're going to be raised and reddened like the papules, but they're going to be pus-filled. So this is where we get the name pustules. So they're going to be pus-filled so you can see these little white areas showing that these skin lesions are pus-filled. So those are going to be the classic skin findings in rosacea. And again, they come and go recurrently with certain triggers, as we mentioned before. Now, there are some other skin findings we can see in rosacea patients. These include burning sensations on the skin, tingling sensations, stinging sensations, and pruritus or itching sensations as well. So these can all be findings in rosacea patients. And then I also want to talk about something called ocular rosacea. So patients with rosacea, typically we always think about it occurring on the skin, but there can be issues with the eyes in patients with rosacea. So in fact, this is going to be something that occurs in the majority of patients. 50 to 75% of patients have some kind of eye involvement. So a majority of patients with rosacea will have eye issues. These include dryness, redness, tearing, blurred vision, and light sensitivity. And we can also see issues with blepharitis, so an inflammation of the eyelids. We can see issues with conjunctivitis, so an inflammation of the conjunctiva. So you can see these little red blood vessels. We can also see issues with keratitis, and we can also see issues with iritis. So iritis is an inflammation of the iris. So the iris is what surrounds the pupil and helps to contract and dilate the pupil. So all of these can be findings we can see in rosacea as well. And the last important clinical finding I want to talk about is something called rhinophyma. And rhinophyma is an enlargement of the nose. So it's an enlargement of the nose. And we can also see issues with hyperplasia of sebaceous glands. So the sebaceous glands in the nose can become very large and contribute to the size of the nose as well. And rhinophyma is going to be due to chronic, long-standing, untreated rosacea. So it's going to occur later on after someone's had rosacea that hasn't been treated effectively. And it is going to almost 
always occur in male patients. So rarely in female patients, but almost always going to occur in male patients. So again, rhinophyma is this enlargement of the nose that occurs in chronic untreated rosacea patients, and it's almost always going to occur in male patients. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you want to learn more about rosacea in more detail, please check my full in-depth lesson on this topic, and please check out my other lessons on dermatological conditions as well. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.